Are we live? We are live. Welcome in, everybody. It has been quite some time since I have done an actual proper live show oh, on YouTube. And what better way to kick back off going live than to have <laughs> this guy? I think everyone in here who doesn't live under a rock knows who this guy is. What's up, Steve Rakin? Hey, man, it's great to be on the channel. It's been a long time, and we go back a long time as well, man. We were doing lives, what, back in like 2016 together? Yeah, 17? 16, 17. Yeah, that's, I think we did our first one late 16 and 17. So you're talking about six years of like being on YouTube, making content, nope. doing live shows. I did a live show every Thursday for like two years straight. It was insane. Dude, and we have no hair anymore. Look at us. We're aging, <laughs> man. The reselling's taking a toll on us. Yeah. You're looking this, good, um, though, man. You got that Florida <laughs> sun. <laughs> what, what, yeah, I got that that red going on on top. Um, yeah, I, the, the, it's crazy. So you want to be a YouTuber. Look what it does to you, just in case you're wondering. It's, it's all the stress. No, it's fun. It's fun doing these live shows. I do miss it sometimes. I miss being able to come on and connect with people and and have people in the chat and stuff like that. So it's it's a pretty, you know, I used to get a lot of questions. I'd open up a 15 minute Q&A. So um, yeah, it's a good time. And anybody else who's watching this who doesn't know, next week, uh, I'm going to be in Vegas. I leave Sunday for the Boss Reseller Remix. And Steve is going to be right behind me a couple days later. He'll be in Vegas. So we're going to connect at least one of the days while we're there. Um, familiar faces. Yeah, it is familiar. Glad to have you guys in here. But yeah, we're going to hang out at least uh, one time in Vegas. Uh, we've connected i think twice in vegas um if you guys remember steve did 40 interviews in like two days <laughs> in vegas we rented out a room whole shebang just one we would pass each other in the elevators going up to steve's room <laughs> yeah the videos are still coming out on my channel i haven't been able to schedule them all out yet no <laughs> yeah that's, that's no legitimate yeah vegas is a fun time so if you guys are going to be in vegas uh for reseller remix i know some of you guys are going to be at asd um, or the, you're going to the scout IQ conference, right? Yep. I'll be speaking over there to the, uh, the booksellers. There you go. So, and that's actually a great segue, uh, into what we're going to talk about today. Um, I put out an email, I put out a post in a video, uh, the last couple of days and, uh, I'm going to let Steve take it, but long story short, uh, I put up the big, and I know it's kind of the shock thing, but it was a picture of your truck, uh, the rear end of your truck to be more specific. Ugh. Uh, what month was that? Uh, that was over a year ago. So that was in what? 2021, the somewhere end of 2021. Yeah. Somewhere around there. Yeah. I was driving at nighttime. Long story short, I got hit by a gigantic commercial truck from behind. I was going whatever the speed limit, 65, 70. And this guy literally cracked me. It was pitch black out, tons of traffic around. And I don't know, man, if you've ever been in an accident, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it like really traumatized me afterwards. And like some of my close friends, it's funny, they they saw my email that go out and they're like, you were really that traumatized? I'm like, actually, I was. I'm just not, I'm not sharing it to you guys, but like on the road, it's scary now. And it yeah. forced me because every time I would drive after the accident, I had a rental and everything. I was like scared. Like I was fearful. I was always looking in my rear view, going through the intersection. It was just so much anxiety. I was like, I need to find a way to be able to source inventory. And uh you know, I've heard about online arbitrage for the longest time, but I didn't want to have to be buying like, I don't know, you know how all the other online arbitrage guys do it. They buy from like all the big websites and the, yeah. the Barnes mm -hmm. and Noble and the Walgreens, Walmart, and the yeah. Walmart mm -hmm. Target, all that. I didn't want to do that because I didn't want to have to deal with all the price take tanking, all the competitors. Um, stuff's pretty expensive to buy online through traditional sources. And uh, yeah, there's the truck, man. And believe it or not, it wasn't totaled. Surprisingly, it came to like 18,000 in, uh, you know, in damages, but, uh, yeah, that's my baby. I've made a lot of money in that truck and I'd recommend all resellers, get yourself a pickup truck, not only for <laughs> safety, but, uh, also yeah. for big hauls, man. But yeah, I stumbled upon eBay to Amazon flips about a year ago. First three or four months I did it. I did it like a complete moron. I uh, did everything wrong inefficiently, slow. I mean, I would be sitting on my computer, Casey, for eight to 12 hours and I'm pulling on my other phone and I would just open up the Amazon seller app uh, and you know, you, you go to the thrift store and you scan barcodes. Well, I was yeah. at my house scanning the pictures with the, with the uh -huh. Amazon app uh -huh. yeah. going to newly listed or ending soonest with one bid. And I was actually making a lot of money. I really was. I was, I was making just as much profit at the thrift store, but it wasn't as fun. I was sitting on the computer all day. My eyes yeah. hurt it hurt. Um, you know, getting chubby just sitting around doing nothing <laughs> and uh you know i gotta get back in shape again i got that connecticut weight on since miami but um oh, yeah. yeah long story short man 
after making a million mistakes, I figured out softwares and ways to automate. And now I'm at the point where I've, I grew my Amazon business from on average, I was doing around 5,000 a month at the time last year. Cause I was more focused on eBay. I wasn't, I was just doing books on the side and stuff up to 30, 31,000, a little over 30,000 for the last 30 days. And uh, my profit margins around uh, 30%. I just put a post on my Instagram. I made $9,400 profit in September in my business. And I broke it all down from Amazon fees to shipping to product costs. So if anyone wants to see that, most people won't share that. I shared it all on my Instagram. Yeah. So yeah, man, yeah. I, I, I spent like three to profit. If you guys don't follow him, by the way, go follow him. Yeah, mm -hmm. man. And now I have virtual assistants that do all the sourcing for me, all the listing, all the repricing. And you put that cost on. Yeah, you put that cost on there as well of what you spent for that. Um, yeah. So now you don't even have to put in all the legwork that you were doing. I'll tell you, probably this is weird, probably about a year ago or a year and a half ago, I sat in front of because I found a few items on accident. I wasn't even trying to buy off of eBay to sell on Amazon because everyone knows I buy a boatload of remotes and stuff. I had a canceled order. Um, because, or I was going to cancel order. I had lost a remote. Like we had overdone the, so anyways, I went looking, you know, to, to basically buy the item so I could fill the order. And I was looking at the price discrepancy and I was like, holy crap, it's like 15 bucks on eBay. And it sold on Amazon for like $40. And I was like, that's yeah. crazy. That's 25 bucks, less fees. I can make like $17. So I went and looked on eBay and I found like 10 of them. And I bought all 10 of them. I was like, I'm taking them all. Like, I'm, that's it. And then they've all sold and I made money. All. And then that, that got me thinking, I'm like, man, there's so many underpriced items on eBay. And there's a lot of them where people put make offer. And I was making offers on some of them and getting them accepted. I was like, okay. And it just, it wasn't something I was pursuing, but I'm like, wow, I wonder how much opportunity there is if I actually sat here and did it. And, and looked at this stuff and found these, these items, not just my remotes, but you found all kinds of different types of items. Yeah. And I'm only in a couple of niches uh, to be perfectly transparent. I'm really good and smart in a couple niches. And then the other 6,000 other subcategories, you know, I'm not an expert in it. You know, I'm a thrifter at heart. I know I understand how to perceive value and, and how to buy low and flip high. But for yeah. anyone who's watching right now, who's never sold on Amazon, and maybe you're thinking, oh, it's too complicated. There's too many rules. Maybe you've heard horror stories. The truth is, it doesn't matter what platform you're on. There's always ways that you can get in trouble, right? Yep. But if you're an eBay seller and you understand how to sell on eBay, because remember, I'm an eBay seller at heart, you know, 2000 yep. videos before I freaking sold on Amazon, maybe not, maybe a mm -hmm. thousand or 1500. But yeah. if you know how to perceive value, if you know how to go thrifting, if you know how to go to garage sales, you're literally missing out on thousands of dollars every single month by not selling on Amazon because there's a huge mm -hmm. difference. And you might be wondering, why would an item sell for more money on Amazon versus eBay? And there's a couple different reasons. Number one, it has to do with brand. People just perceive Amazon as more valuable. Okay, number two, the Prime program. People love to buy directly from Amazon. And what most customers don't realize is people like myself, Casey, folks who are watching, we're the ones who supplying Amazon with all the inventory. But customers don't know that. All customers know how to do is go to a listing and hit buy it now. They yep. don't know what the buy box is. They don't understand their sellers rotating through it. And that free one to two day shipping, hassle-free returns, not having to deal with customers, even though, I mean, the, the fulfillment centers are doing it all. That's why they pay more money. And you said, Casey, you had seen those remotes for 15, selling for 40. Well, guess what? I've sold over the last 30 days, a little over 800 items. And guess what? My average buy cost on eBay is 15 and my average selling cost is 40. That's pretty funny. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. People are willing to pay not just a couple dollars more, like significantly more for items. There are some people, I actually did a poll of non-resellers, like my neighbors and people that I know don't. I'm like, why, do you, why did you buy this on Amazon? Did you know it was cheaper on eBay? And they're like, I don't even look at eBay. I don't even go there. I, I just shop like Amazon, Amazon. And there's people like that that didn't even know they could have bought it for $15. And I'm like, would you have bought it from eBay if you knew that it was $15? And even some of those people are like, probably not. I was just going to click Amazon. And you said it, 52% of all orders last year on Amazon were third-party sellers. That's us. And they estimate by the end of next year, it could be as high as 60% of all sales. That's crazy. Yep. So uh, Tracy just had a really good question. Uh, Steve, do you have the eBay items sent to you and sell it directly or do you just have it uh, FBA on Amazon with the items sourced through eBay? 
Yeah. So uh, if you were to know where I lived, uh, you know, quite a few resellers do in my area and they, they laugh because they go by my house and they're like, dude, you got like 80 items sitting on your front steps. And yeah, every <laughs> single day I have anywhere between 40 to a hundred items uh, that get delivered to my house. And while that may seem overwhelming, um, you know, big shout out to uh, my girlfriend who is, uh, you know, prepping all of my items, unboxing all of my items and helping out. So uh, she gets paid. So it's not free labor. Right. So don't give me a hard time. But yeah, once a week uh, she comes and she helps me. She spends about seven or eight hours, opens everything up, preps it all up. And then I, uh, I give it to my virtual assistants. They list it all and then we ship it all out uh, the next day. So it really doesn't take long. You know, I'm, I'm only spending really three to five hours of labor per week on this business. So, Oh, that's really good. Yeah. I mean, that's fantastic. It, I, I agree. Like having the packages shipped in when you think about even with you, let's say 40 or 50 packages come when you go out to the thrift stores, you buy 40, 50 items, whatever it is. You spend hours driving three or four hours in a day driving around just to a couple of stores. You're spending an hour in a store. Um, it's a lot of time gas uh, and your anxiety after the accident, I live in Florida. I swear I'm in accidents like near True. misses on an hourly basis. Every time I go out the door in my car, it's like a, a Mario Kart driving through Florida. Dude, my mom, she got in an accident yesterday. She got sideswiped after leaving oh. the thrift store and now her car's all messed up, man. It's oh like people don't know how to drive anymore. It's absolutely wild. Nope. nope. So anything, I just said it to um, my fiance too. I said, I'm so sick of driving out like because I don't really go to thrift stores anymore either because I buy everything in bulk and it all gets delivered to my storage units. But even then, I got to drive to them and grab inventory, bring it back, prep it. Shit. And I'm like, I hate the driving and then dropping boxes off to UPS or, you know, going to the post office or doing all this stuff. And I'm like, man, I just wish I could just sit at home and just source and have everything in front of me. I just need to be at my computer. I'd be more productive, I think. Dude, and, and you have such a nice car, man. Like when I used to own the Corvette, man, I, oh, yeah. I'm telling you 90% of the reason I sold that Corvette is because I had even more anxiety driving that thing. I was like, this thing, if yeah. I, I'm going to do something stupid, I need to get rid of this thing. Yeah. And I, yeah, I don't like my driving. I feel confident with my driving. A lot of resellers have come and stayed at my house or been around, but the people around here suck. They suck at driving. They don't pay attention. They're <laughs> Florida. We got a lot of elderly people. It's just the truth. There's a lot of older people who probably shouldn't have a license anymore. And yeah, I wish a lot of times when I used to go to thrift stores, oh my God, I used to park in the back of the parking lot. I would try to go at times when I knew people weren't, you know, going and uh, I hated it. And I always tell people, be, you know, work smarter, not harder. And this drop at the end, it was driving around all these thrift stores and only finding two, three, four items. And that was the ultimate, like I'd wasted all this time and found nothing. Yeah. And the, I the, best, on the, computer. the best part, what I like about eBay sourcing off of eBay. And of course it's not for everybody, but um, I've taught a lot of people how to do this. A lot of my students, coaching students, the best part I love about sourcing on eBay is it's open every second, every minute, every hour of the day. And it's almost like a video game, right? It's similar to thrift stores, but sometimes thrift stores, you can go the day before and then the next day and the next day, and it's all the same inventory. Yeah. eBay, there's millions of new listings every single day. And if you understand how to use the softwares, if you understand the various strategies that I'm going to talk about and teach today. And, and by the way, um, I know you shouted it out in an email. I have a masterclass that's literally going down. It's going to be released October 10th. Um, feel free to share details in the description later on. But for anyone serious, I'd love to be able to help you guys because yeah. I have learned so many mistakes. I've learned from my mistakes over the last year so many times, not because I'm smart, because I made so many stupid mistakes. I feel like I've literally figured out almost like a secret recipe, man. I can't wait to show you. I have a bunch of items that are literally available now that people could buy if they want. So I'm going to show you guys live. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Tracy is, was just asking actually about that. Do you buy new or used items um, that you're flipping? But before uh, I'm going to have Steve show us some examples. Uh, he just said it's October 10th, which actually is funny enough. That's Monday. Uh, just so anybody doesn't uh, remember either, I actually found this out five minutes before the stream. Monday is a holiday, so there's no shipping Monday. Uh, less things you have to do, which will give you, you time. You can watch it. Yeah, you can be able to watch, uh, you know, join Steve and watch the uh, the master class. I'll link it. It should already be linked down below. You guys can click on it to learn more about it. Um, but that's Monday. So we're Friday. Take the weekend. Get done what you need to get done. Get prepared and then just set it to your calendar for Monday. And uh, get yourself signed up before then. And uh, Monday's a holiday, so you'll have time to check it out. Uh, Tracy's question, new or used? 
Both. I do mostly new, but I do sell used. I'm actually going to share with you a, a used item that uh, I'm going to try to purchase if it's still available during the stream. So nice. <laughs> they go they go quickly. Tracy will be there. Awesome. Great, Tracy. Um, let's Great. go ahead. Let's, yeah, let's just jump into uh, to what Steve's going to show you. We'll give you some examples so that you guys can uh, can kind of get an idea to get you uh, get you rolling for Monday. Steve, let me. Can you screen share? Uh, let me see if I could jump in. Well, happy early speak? birthday, Unicorn Hustler. Birthday is Monday, so birthday gift uh, to yourself. Yeah, that'd be pretty good. Awesome, awesome. Can you see my screen? Uh, yep, there it is. Let me add it in here. Bam. Awesome. That awesome. is hilarious that you just opened this up. I have been binge watching every season of Survivor. I just oh, finished great. season 17. Yeah, it's, it's great. So, um, yeah, let me let me get right into things because um, I want to give you guys the good stuff. So I sell a lot of different items. I sell board games. Um, I've sourced plenty of them on eBay used and and new. I like new the best. Um, yeah. I sell DVDs. I sell CDs, a little bit of electronics, video games. Uh, there's so many different categories that I sell in. Uh, there's a ton of different items, puzzles, toys, um, office supplies, routers, calculators. There's so many different categories. I don't recommend starting with like a million different niches. Just start with one, but I'm going to share with you a couple different niches and some deals that are available. And I'm going to, I'm going to break down why I'm going to buy them. And I'm going to share what they're selling for on eBay. And I'm going to share with you uh, what they're selling for on Amazon, the profits, ROIs, all of that. So is it good to dive into it, Casey? Yeah, take it away. Awesome. So in terms of how do I find these deals, there's a lot of different ways. That's actually one of the things I'm going to be talking about in the master class. That's why it's four hours long. <laughs> Plus there's going to be a two hour live stream about a week after. So it's going to be about six hours of content. So in this video, I'm just going to share a couple different methods in terms of how to find these items. There's a couple different ways you can do it. Number one, I recommend for anybody who sold an item for more than 50 bucks. Casey, have you ever sold items for more than 50 bucks on eBay? Um, rarely I typically, my average sale price hangs around 20 to 25, but I have sold a few. I, there's some expensive ones that I can right. And, and do you sell on Amazon at all, Casey? Yep. Yep. I, I am in two niches on Amazon electronics. Everybody knows I'm a remote seller. So that's one of my niches. Yeah. So I'm sure you sell quite a few items for like 40 to 50 bucks on Amazon because things uh -huh. sell for a lot more, right? Yep. yep. One of the best things anybody can do right now, if you sell on Amazon and if you don't sell on Amazon, you can actually go to my YouTube channel, just type in rake and profit books. I literally have a five hour video that walks you through how to get started, how to list, how to scan, how to do it all. It's hundred percent free. So you can check that out, but let's assume you already have an account, go to your Amazon account or your eBay and try to find items that you have sold for a lot of money. The reason, the way I found this is because I actually found this at a thrift store, Casey, uh, mm -hmm. last year at Savers for like five bucks and it sold for $90 during Q4 on Amazon FBA. It actually went over a hundred. I think I actually sold one for over a hundred and I'll actually show you proof of that shortly. Um, so that's how I found this. I went to eBay, typed in survivor. I hit new lowest. And then I found this, this is $12 and 50 cents plus 16 shipping, which seems a little expensive, but that's going to be 28 50. A couple yep. things that, that I do on eBay to get better deals is make a best offer. Now I don't really like to lowball people like crazy. 10 to 20% is reasonable. Once you go over that, I don't know. I just feel like you're kind of being a, you know what? So yeah. I don't, that's just me. You can do it if you want, but I don't like to lowball people, but let's just say we pay full price for this, which is 2850. What I'm going to do is look this up right now on Amazon and you can see that it's selling for 5436. So I have a, um, a Chrome extension. It's about 17 a month. It's called seller ramp. It'll break down your ROI and your profit if you sell an item. So if I buy this for $28.50, which a tip that I want to give everyone, if you're going to buy an eBay, get sales tax exempt. It's really easy to get yourself a reseller certificate or fill out a form, depending on what state you're in, submit that to, Am uh, to eBay. You don't have to pay sales tax. So that saves me yep. about 7% in every purchase. So here alone, this would only make $9, about $10 profit, which is 35% ROI. It's not bad. It's not, bad. Yeah. not bad at all. But one thing to keep in mind, and the reason I want to share this is because board games like this, they go crazy during Q4. So you don't always have to price the lowest, right, Casey? Sometimes yeah. you can price second, third, fifth, eighth in line, depending on the trends. 
And this is called a Keepa chart. Okay. Think of it as like, I don't know, it's kind of like a stock chart. It's not super complicated, but if you take a look at this pink line, this is what's known as the buy box. What is the buy box? The buy box is when you go to Amazon and you click buy it now. So right now the buy box is 5436 because it's still a little bit early in the season. But if you take a look last year, look at this, Casey, in November, it was at the same price. Look at this, around 50 something bucks at this mm -hmm. time. And then look what happened in Q4, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. 80. Remember I told you I sold it at 90 bucks. It went up, it went up over 100, 105 bucks. Wow. So this item right here, I'm going to buy it and I'm not going to price it at 50 something. I could, I can get rid of it quick, but we're in the middle of Q4, baby. We're not pricing at the lowest. So what I'm going to do is probably price this up at maybe $89.99. Okay. And if you take a look, oopsies, I'm going into uh, okay. music. <laughs> yeah, we're going we're gonna to play the theme song, the Rockstar theme song. So uh, if you scroll down, you'll be able to see where the sellers are at. And there's a bunch of yeah. them right now. They're all around 50, 60 bucks. $60, yeah, mid 60s. Yeah. But this thing is going to sell out. It, it, there's a lot of them in line right now, but this thing is going to sell out because you can see this has 18 sales a month. Okay, this is selling yep. 18 times a month. So I promise you, once we get into Q4, this thing's going to be selling 20, 25, 30 times a month. This is going to pop. And you could even look over the last couple of years. Look at it. It, it pops. The last couple of years pops, mm -hmm. pops. It pops. That's awesome. So the, the same thing's going to happen here. So I'm going to put this at 89.90. I don't usually play speculation games like this um, all the time, but for toys in Q4, bada bing, bada boom, the profits are coming soon. This is going to bring in about $40 profit when it sells. It'll probably take about a month and a half or two months once it pops. But that's one example. 140% right? ROI if it sells for that. Even if you had to bump a few dollars off of it and sold it for 79, you'd still make like a hundred percent return and you make $30 profit. I mean, yeah. it's just doing quick math. It's pretty crazy to, to just see this one item. Like just. Yeah. Even if you put it at sixty nine ninety nine, which that'll hit in thirty days or less, based on the last yeah. couple of years, you're already at eighty percent. I mean, even if you just sell it for the lowest price, fifty three ninety nine, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? You're going to make thirty three percent ROI, make seven eight bucks for what? Two minutes of work. Yep. It's not the same as eBay, where you have to package every individual item up. You throw right. everything in a box, ship it to Amazon, and you're literally done. So, yep. um, no from there. This is and, and these tools just to to let people know these tools that Steve's using um, the amp and also the the graph I can't remember which the the graph one you have at the bottom keep um, yeah that keep it that's right and um those are all tools that Steve's going to show you if you are at the master class on Monday when it drops he's going to show you how he uses those tools where to get them how to you know uh, set all yeah. the, the things that you have so that's all part of it as well um ask the seller for cheaper shipping yeah you could I, when you're buying these items i always take the shipping in mind like because those of us that are familiar that 16 dollars shipping on that is probably close it's probably a 12 or 13 dollar to ship maybe 14 so i would be happy at 12.50 for that game i would offer them like 11 bucks save a dollar 50 maybe or, or 10 bucks you know 10 percent would be a, a, a dollar 25 off of that so just offer them 11 you don't have to you could buy a full price and still do okay on it yeah, this is like, it's crazy. Like, you know, I've been in the game for eight or nine years now. And it's like, this is probably one of the easiest ways I've ever found uh, to source items. It's crazy. But the key for it being easy is you have to build what's known as a leads list or a replens list. We have over 3,500 items on our list because we've sold over 5,000 items this last year. And 3,500 of them are worth sourcing again at, at a good profit. Wow. We had a good experience with them. But uh, moving forward, Ah, crap. This thing sold already. Someone already bought it. Anyways, um, this was $9.50. This was a yep. used uh, CD. So I do sell used items as well. Oh, my God. I am going into my inventory and everything. Okay, cool. So this is $9.50 right here. It's sold. But what I would do, would do is maybe go look for it again on eBay. But I want to share with you because it just sold. Uh, this right here, the buy box is 50 bucks, but that's new. This is used. You can yep. see the buy box is at twenty eight eighty four, and remember, you want to price your items based upon the buy box because eighty percent of customers on Amazon they're not going to go ahead and look at all the offers. They're just yep. going to click this, and then they're going to go add to cart. Okay, yep. so that's twenty eight eighty four. 
we can source that from nine fifty. This isn't going to be a home run, but if we paid nine dollars and fifty cents, and we sold it for what twenty eight, twenty eight eighty four. That's yep. still a ten dollar profit. This is slower of a seller. It's only got three sales a month, but it's a fifty five thousand rank in music, which, which good for music, yeah. It's solid. Um, this isn't a home run or anything, but just a, a simple little example. I want to show you a, a little bit of a better one that I just found. And Casey, tell everybody we were talking what twenty minutes before the show started, so I didn't have time to go and like prep and get the best things ever. So no. just know, like, this took me ten minutes to find these items. <laughs> yeah, we literally just put this together like today, this afternoon, like just a, and within the last 30 minutes, hour tops. Exactly. So here's a DVD that's brand new. Um, there was one that actually just sold a little while ago. When did it sell? I think it sold yesterday um, for $15. The lowest one I found available right now is 16 plus 350. But one thing I do sometimes is I'll just message them. Because you know how it is selling on eBay, right? I love eBay, but that algorithm on eBay, it's like, I don't know. <laughs> it's just like on Amazon, if I list all the time, I get rewarded. On eBay, it's like if I forget to list a couple of days, it's like they want to punish you. And like, I don't yeah. know. Maybe, I, I don't know. Do you ever feel like that? Sometimes it's up and it, down. Yeah, I, I sometimes I can list a lot and nothing happens. And sometimes I can list like just a couple things. It's so hit or miss. It's like feast or famine with, with eBay. Sometimes. Yeah. But the great thing about eBay is you could sell pretty much anything and everything and lots and parts, and you can't really do that on Amazon. So no. um, we just, we actually just had a question and I'm glad they asked because this will be a touch on with that Monday. Uh, Jenny Penny vintage was asking about, I'll pop it up real quick. Um, uh, being gated for CDs and media and stuff like that. Uh, like the, the Doobie brothers, you just popped up in this mummy collection DVD. So uh, how hard is it to find an approved uh, media wholesaler to get a invoice from? Well, I'll tell you right now, just because I'm on the Rockstar Flipper, I have a um, I have a step by step guide. I'll give it to everyone for free. I'll give you a, literally a Google Doc. You're not going to have to put an email or anything. So after this, I'll give it to you. It, sh it shares with you what supplier to go to, how many to buy, step by step by step, and it shows with you a it shows you an invoice and how to mark it up and everything. So. Um, okay. anybody can go to like christianbook.com. That's the, that's the method now, but yeah. remind me after the show, we'll link it up and we'll give everybody that Google doc. It's step-by-step. Step. It's the easiest thing in the world to get ungated for CDs and DVDs. Like any, I've helped like a hundred people in the last like couple of weeks. So nice. Yeah. Um, everybody watching this, I'll add it to the description box probably after yeah, the sir. video. Yeah. So bookmark this, um, this video, uh, Jam says, how many on average could you source a day if you were actually like, you're working at it? Um, by myself or like with a team? Yeah, if it was just you sitting there, what do you think would be fair? Uh, like the average? For like seven or eight hours, I could probably source like maybe 50 or 60 items. Yeah. Okay. But my average, my average profit on a lot of these items are really high. Like I have a lot of items that, you know, can make 17, 20, 30. It just depends on how much money you're willing to spend. That's the biggest thing that holds me back uh, right now is, I'm scaling my business by not going into debt. A lot of people will scale their business going into debt. Yeah. Like I can, I could get my sales up to hundred grand a month within like two months if I wanted to. But the reason I've only gone from five to 31 is because I'm not going into debt to scale. I'm scaling yeah. with my profits. So yeah, then that's a great thing. I mean, yeah, there, I mean, if you're confident, if people had, you know, grab that credit card and pop $10,000 on a credit card and all of a sudden you'll have 30, nope. 40 grand in sales in a month or two, maybe, but some people feel comfortable doing that. Some don't. Um, I, I try to buy all year long, 90% of what I buy without credit cards or without, you know, yeah. Stuff. Yeah. I, I have use no credit card debt right now. None. So. Yeah. I mean, I use credit cards. I use uh cashback portals. I have a yeah. lot of techniques that again, I'll be sharing in the masterclass for everyone, but, uh, yeah, I always use credit cards, but I always pay them off in full. So, um, yeah, moving forward, this is an item that, um, I was looking through the sold listings. You can source this new on eBay pretty much all day long between like 15 to 18 bucks, even a little as low as 13. I sold one for 13 the other day. This one sold for 15. And if you go on Amazon right now, the buy box is at 32.99, but if you notice, it doesn't say prime. So what that no. means, it means is there's a merchant seller who has the buy box. Okay. And the merchant seller, yeah, it's FBM and it's plus five bucks shipping. So the lowest offers 37. And 
The reason FBA isn't getting the buy box is because Amazon's like, you know what? Five star sales, you're pricing at 50 bucks. That's ridiculous. We're going to punish you and give a merchant the, the buy yeah. box. <laughs> yep, exactly. 99% of the time, the FBA seller is going to get uh, the buy box. But if they don't, it's, it means that it's just priced uh, way too high. So yeah. I would come in and I would most likely price this probably maybe at like 40 bucks or so. Let's take a look at the history of this item over the last year. So you can see that it's been anywhere from 40 to 35. Recently, it was up around 38. Uh, if you take a look at the stats, you'll be able to see that this is selling six times a month, 58,000 rank. So if I can get this for 50 bucks and let's just say we sell it for 40, Maybe we sell it for a couple bucks less, maybe for a couple bucks more. I use a repricer that'll play around with the prices to get the buy box. Look mm -hmm. at that, $12.80, 85% profit. Dude, This is these are the exact types of items I buy every single day. And I buy 800 to 1,000 items every single month, and I don't source a single one of them. Not saying that you guys should all, you know go out and hire virtual assistants off the bat. Not at all, but you could. And- I'm not even kidding. I could source a hundred X the CDs and DVDs alone than I do now. I just don't have that much money <laughs> or time, yeah. but um, yeah, man, any questions about this? Yeah, this is like these little returns. Like when you start talking about 50, 60, 70, 80% margins, I mean, that's really good. Somebody even just spends a thousand bucks over the course of a month and can make 600, 700, $800 in profit and add that on to business they already have. Or, and there's a lot of people who have terrible thrift stores or they don't have a lot of sourcing. Maybe they live out in the middle of nowhere or uh, they don't drive or they don't get around very well or the gas is expensive, all this you know, sort of stuff. Sourcing at home is definitely an option to think about and something that you know people should consider. Like, okay, let me, like you said, you don't gotta hire a virtual assistant, a VA. You can just jump in and do it yourself and start sourcing three or four items a day and just build from there, just build up. So. Yeah. Don't, don't quit your normal thrifting, like keep thrifting, mm -hmm. keep buying wholesale. If you're buying lots from Casey or from others or whatever, like keep doing your model right now. The best thing about the eBay to Amazon flips is you can add it to the side. And guess what? Once you learn eBay to Amazon flips, just like CT cap was saying in the comments, love this, go to Facebook marketplace. I absolutely crush it on Facebook marketplace. Facebook marketplace is one of the best places to source. So Say, for yeah. example, you're looking for an item on your leads list and you can't find it on eBay, which most of the time you're not going to be able to. That's why you need to have a big leads list. And then you or your team just go through it every day and you'll find 20, 30, 40 items easily without even any softwares. If you can't find it, go look on Mercari. Go look on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, even yeah. Etsy and Poshmark sometimes for board games and stuff. There are so yeah. many opportunities. And uh, Casey, is it okay if I share what I found here on eBay just before the show? Yep. Let's see it. Oh God. I see what it is. <laughs> so this is, this is a little long tail of an item. Um, I would probably do a little negotiating and I actually, I just like, I just jumped on this for my leads list and I didn't even check to see if I could find anything cheaper. So bear with me, but this is, let's just say we can get this for 50 bucks. We negotiate. I send them a message, say, Hey, how you doing? I'm open to, um, I was curious if you were open to taking an offer, no pressure. If you don't, would you be open to $50 plus shipping? I could pay immediately. Um, so a lot of times eBay sellers will accept that because there's a lot of eBay sellers. I've been in your guys' shoes. I still sell on eBay on the side. Sometimes that algorithm just isn't treating you well and you just want to move your inventory, right? You just want to get some cash in your pocket, get some money moving in. And, uh, let's just say we were able to get this for 50 bucks plus 10 bucks shipping. Let's say we got this for, I don't know, 60 bucks out the door, which I'm pretty confident I could. Let's go take a look on Amazon. This is selling for $169. This is, is this the same item? Yes, it is. It's selling for $169. It is a little bit slower of a seller with a 400,000 rank, only three sales a month on this item. And if we take a look at the history, let's see if this thing goes up at all during Christmas time. So uh, yeah, I mean, there's a couple, you could see each one of these green lines going down as a sale. 225. Yeah, this is eh, like this is eh. it, it could be potent there could be potential here, but if I was able to get this for how much did I say 50 plus 10? 60 dollars. Yeah, you know what? Let's just say we paid full price for it. Let's say we paid 70, 70 bucks. All right. That's still an 89% ROI. May that yeah. 
I mean, that could maybe that'll sell during Q4. Maybe it'll pop in a week or two. If you take a look at the competition, you'll see there's only one FBA seller at 169, and they have, you know, um, a couple items right there. I mean, you could easily just undercut them, which I'm not a huge fan of because if there's a repricer, it'll chase you. But yeah. uh, even if you match the price, the buy box will rotate. And yeah, it's an expensive item, but you know. I have quite a few friends. I don't deal with a lot of high end stuff like this, but my buddy, Josiah, he lives in Alaska. He just posted on his Instagram. He did a hundred thousand dollars this month with eBay to Amazon. He made around 20,000 profit. His average buy cost, I believe is around 80 or 90 bucks. So wow. he's buying big boy stuff. Yeah. Wow. He's got that big boy money, man. I don't got that type of money, but uh, <laughs> you know, the funny thing is he's not doing it by going into debt either. Both of my, I have two really good friends who do this. One of them does around 60 K. My buddy Josiah does hundred K. They're, they're, they're just like me. They're huge advocates of not going into debt. So, yeah. um, I have another Lego item I actually found. And, uh, this was the, uh, <laughs> look at this one little Lego ET. I, oh man. You, you remember that movie, dude? I do. Oh. I love it. All oh, that stuff's hot right now. Eighties and nineties stuff is like just through the fire. Oh, uh, it's freaking awesome. This on Amazon right now is selling for $67. So we'd only make $12.91. It's still a 32% ROI, but look at it it's selling for 25 times, uh, 25 times a month. And look at that buy box. It's super consistent. I mean, it dipped yeah. a little, but man, that's a quick 10, 11 bucks. I mean, yeah, you got to put up $40, but you just get it back like that. So yeah. Hopefully that helped. I didn't want to overwhelm anybody. No, but I'm telling I think you guys, are seeing, it's opening people's minds up to look at the price discrepancies, the differences from eBay to Amazon, which makes, and this has been going, let's, let's be totally transparent. This has been going on for a long time. There's people that Forever. have done this for quite a while. And it's just a matter of like processing it of, oh my God, 20 bucks, 50 bucks. And we see it all the time. I see it, you know, and I told Steve too before, the show like oh you know my neighbors will just click amazon and they'll just buy and i'm like did you even know this was half price on ebay they're like no i just go to amazon there's so many things that people just click amazon and they just don't even look they don't go ebay it was actually funny as, as bad as we get on ebay about their marketing uh in 2019 their last ebay open before covid um their slogan that was on the back of all the shirts they give you was have you checked ebay lately <laughs> that was their that was their big marketing tool. Have you checked eBay? Have you checked eBay? And it was like the, the legit answer is no, we'll just go to Amazon. <laughs> They'd get so mad. So they actually made it a whole branding thing. It's hilarious. Uh flipping flipping with Kane, would Lego be a gated item? Yeah, but all you have to do is go to Lego.com, buy 10 little five dollar like keychains, and then uh just send the invoice to Amazon. You'll be instantly ungated. There you go. Another piece of golden nugget. There's, there's ways around all this. I, I always hear people scared of Amazon. Like, oh, I don't know what I can sell. There's ways to get open for not that 90% hard. of what you would want to sell. There's only a few items on Amazon that are truly like unobtainable, <laughs> but most of the items are easy. Yeah. It's honestly, my whole new mission now, my YouTube channel is going to be to, cause I'm trying, I'm always asking myself, how can I help people the most and really make the, the biggest impact? And Really what my mission is going to be is really trying to help teach eBay sellers how to start selling on Amazon. Don't abandon eBay. Don't abandon Facebook Marketplace. Those are amazing platforms. And you guys, we all have skills that are just literally, we can never go broke again, right? If you know how to sell on eBay, don't stop selling on eBay, right? Not saying that at all, but start adding Amazon to the mix. Go to Amazon Seller Central, sign up, get a free individual account, download the Amazon Seller app, and just start looking at board games get ungated with DVDs, get ungated with Lego. I'm telling you right now, I swear over anything, there is so much money to be made for the average reseller on Amazon. And guess what? People like to create drama and horror stories to keep you away. Everyone wants to make it sound like there's so many horror stories, but then when you have to dive into the horror stories of people getting kicked off, they're selling a bunch of fake DVDs or they're selling fake Gucci on Am or doing whatever. And it's like, no wonder you got kicked off. It's like the same thing with real estate. Do you know my dad... A lot of friends, teachers, they never get into real estate. Don't get into real estate. If you become a landlord, your life's going to be hell. And then I read a bunch of books and I learned the reason why it's hell for most people is because they manage it like idiots. And I learned a way. I hired an amazing management company. It's been like three, four years. It's been the best thing ever. Now I'm making a thousand dollars passive income from each one. I'm like, why is everybody telling me not to do real estate? 
Yep. People want to scare you because they don't know. Yeah, it's usually either uneducated people, inexperienced people, or people who are scared themselves. The scared people are always the loudest voices. I, I learned that lesson. <laughs> it's true. It's true, so. Yeah, but um, the, these exact like me just sitting here watching it, I'm like kicking myself like why? And I've been talking about it, talking about it, talking about it, even before Steve reached out or I saw all this stuff. I was like, man, I or haters, yeah. I uh, I need to stay at home and source. Like, I need to be more efficient. I need to be. I hate driving. Every day I got to go out and drive. I dread it. I, literally, I hate driving in Florida. I just they're like, oh, you love Florida so much. I hate driving in Florida. It's the one thing. And I do have a beautiful car. And I love driving it out there, but I'm scared to death every time I go out. So go to Miami, man. Go drive around Brickell, man. Go go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah hard pass i go there like once every year or so and or every other year i did until covid and uh driving down there i used to drive down to key west and drive through fort lauderdale and miami and that wasn't fun either um <laughs> antho yeah let's get some last questions in before we let steve go antho dot d i have a question on ebay should i list my names in english if your first language is french if you're on ebay dot us if you're on the actual ebay site then yeah uh your buying pool is going to be mostly um Americans and English speaking buyers. And uh, this isn't racist or any kind of, you know, bad jab at anybody. But when Americans see broken English or bad language stuff, we tend to shy away from it because we're not sure if it's a scam. A lot of people are. Yeah. So if you're doing that, you should definitely make sure that you have all the correct grammar, or the, the writing, even if it's not your first language. Uh, driving around Dallas is hell. I didn't drive around Dallas. I went to Poshfest in Dallas 2018. And I Ubered around everywhere, so it's all good. <laughs> um, just looking at the stock chart, I would long eBay and short Amazon right now. No, I, I, Amazon's supposed to do 400 billion this year. That's to give you an example. eBay does 12 billion, 13 billion. That is 30, 30 times, 33 times bigger than eBay. So that's like crazy, crazy big. Um, yeah, Raken blew up on TikTok. Raken got big time on TikTok. <laughs> so the video of your mom, I just, I, this is totally off topic, but the video of your mom, this was one of the book ones because your mom sells books and stuff. That one went totally viral. And I watched it go from like a couple thousand to like 30,000 <laughs> to like 300,000. What's it at? How, how many did that get? Dude, on TikTok, it went to 2 million. And guess what? Ooh. I took the video. I used a, uh, a free app to download it without the watermark. I put it yeah. on Instagram and I was at like 40,000 followers on Instagram. I uploaded to Instagram, got a, got 5 million views and got 60,000 followers. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's crazy, man. It's a crazy little world, man. Short form content. Now it's like, you know yeah. how it is, man. We both have YouTube channels. Like I'll put my heart and soul into a video. Like I'll bleed for the whole year and like post it and get like 400 views. And then like, I'll post the dumbest video on TikTok. It's like 80,000 views. I'm like, yeah. what's happening in this world? Everything's moving towards a short attention span. It's a That's short attention it. span. Yeah. Which is why like the default on there is like 30 seconds. And, <laughs> crazy. and I'm like 30 seconds. I'll start talking like, Typical rake and rock star YouTube videos like, hey guys, welcome in. I'm like, crap, the 30 seconds is over already. Try and again. you lost them and yeah. they unsubscribed. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, do flipping with Kane, good question. Um, he noticed that most of the not to do stock photos on eBay, Amazon. So when you're listing on Amazon, generally speaking, it's the catalog photos, and you don't need to retake uh that's just a waste Never. of time uh yep. to retake photos. There's very rare instances you would ever do that. Um, if, you had had a used, if you had a used item, uh, definitely not on the new items, but if you have a used item and there was something you wanted to uh, document or something on that, maybe, but very rarely would you need to retake any photos. Yeah, um, I never have my whole life. Yeah, I, 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 can't, I sell a lot of used remotes and stuff, and they're almost all the same condition. If I have multiple quantities, I, I just won't even bother. The only reason I would do it is if there's, you know, like one remote and it has some stuff I want to document. Like I sold a Bose Wave remote. Uh, like a week ago, it's like a $90 used remote. It's like 200 brand new. I bought it for a dollar. I sold it for 90 oh, and um, it, it had like a scratch down the back of the battery door. So I took a picture of that and uploaded it. I was like, whatever. You are the goat of remotes, man. I <laughs> love it, man. Um, you're, I'm, I'm that, that, you're the remote, remote goat. Crazy. <laughs> remote flipper. Oh, I have one note, uh, one, one note, one, uh, one thing I want to mention about stock photos. Uh, one of the things that, um, I'm, I'm wary of is, is buying from eBay sellers that just have a stock photo, unless it's like a really massive, gigantic eBay seller. Um, 
that has yeah. a description, but the whole new thing is now, and like, I even do it too. Like, I'll be honest. I'm kind of like a lazy eBay seller now. Like I'll just use like the, whatever, like, you know how it just like creates a description for you. It's, it's not yeah. really great for conversions, but if you put good pictures, it's fine. But, yeah. um, I don't like buying from stock photo eBay sellers with no description or just like the, the, the stock one. So be, be, uh, beware of that. And also, um, I don't like to buy from e eBay sellers who only have like 20 or 30 feedback or who have like uh, feedback less than 95%. There's just too many sellers out there. I don't have to risk it. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, there's a lot of material. I, and this is why I tell people to, you know, you don't have to overdo it and have a perfect listing, but give us something like just the, a, a description. And I have a template, like it's a copied and pasted template, but it, it is the same stuff. So if I'm selling a polo shirt, it's going to say, you know, Nike, uh, Tiger Woods, Nike, polo, purple and white striped, uh, excellent, good condition, uh, see photos for measurements or whatever we have. It's, it's short, it's sweet. I literally click one button, the template pops up. I change, you know, if it's an extra large versus a medium, I change that, I change the color, little quick thing, and then we hit list. Like, it's just something so that we know that like you're alive, you're a human. Uh, the photos, yeah, I hate stock photos. I've always been an anti-stock photo person. We use photo room for the white background, but you can clearly tell my photos are not stock photos. Yes, it's white. And some people always say, oh, your photos look like stock. I'm like, but you can tell they're a real item. Like you can tell. And My buddy flips a lot of remotes on Amazon FBA. I'd actually be curious um, behind <laughs> the scenes, send me your store. I'm going to ask him and see if he's bought from you before. <laughs> I talk to a lot of drop shippers on eBay with the remotes. I know they're either selling to Amazon or drop shipping straight. Uh, yeah. So like I'll see a remote that I have a bunch of up for 15 or $17 on eBay and I'll go check Amazon and they're at like 30 and I'm like, crap. And I like the price kind of fluctuates. And then I'll go and end them and list them on Amazon. I'm like, you as soon as I see someone drop ship a remote of mine, I immediately go and look at the model number. <laughs> <Look it up. laughs> yeah. I have a specific script that I send. Um, after I put my team, they send it after we purchase an item, we send it. And uh, I got featured on NC pickers, YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Cause he was like, uh, he called, he called me out. He's like, Oh, this guy is so annoying. But he was like joking around. I hit him up. I'm like, dude, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to like reduce refunds. Cause these eBay sellers keep screwing me over, yeah. sending me stuff that's not listed. And we're cool now and everything. But, uh, yeah, the point I'm trying to make is like, I, I always send a script, um, because you have yeah. to be, you have to be careful, man. There's a, I'm sure the people watching now, like these are all legit eBay sellers because they're watching you and they, but there's yeah. a lot of eBay sellers who are really scammy, unfortunately. So you have to be careful yeah. when you're buying on eBay, especially for counterfeits as well. Yep. And, and it just it, like the Lego thing went through a big phase. That one was bad. I had so many people messaging me about Lego. Uh, I, I, I can pretty much pick out who's a good seller and who's not. And the red flags are always there and I just click past them. But uh, Urban Fossaker asked about eBay to eBay. It's possible, but there's not enough price discrepancy generally. Um, and that's why we go over to Amazon because there's just such a price increase in the prime thing and everything we talked about at the beginning. Um, now we just need list perfectly to add Amazon. <laughs> Amazon's so fast to list on though. Like if you haven't sold on Amazon, it is so fast to list. It is not this item specific, you know, garbage mess that eBay keeps giving us. It's it's so much easier. And I love Amazon listing way better than anything else. Like that's, yeah, you can, I love, you can bark code scan most of it. Yeah. I love how everything's just under one listing. I'm not even kidding. Like, again, I'm really, I, I hate to, to beat a dead horse with this, but I know there's a lot of eBay sellers watching. And remember I was an eBay seller for what, six, seven years. Like I wasn't even selling that much on Amazon. Like Amazon is literally a hundred times easier to list on and sell items than eBay. I know a lot of you guys are under the impression from people who don't know what they're talking about saying it's the, oh, it's the hardest thing ever. And there's so many rules. Yes, there are rules just like there's rules in life Every and programs time, yeah. and everything. It's just like, there's rules to society that you have to learn as you get older. Like there's rules to Amazon. It's a hundred times easier. I'm not saying to stop eBay. I'm not saying it's, I'm not even saying it's better because for me, it's not all about the money. I love treasure hunting. I love like being in contact with the mm -hmm. customers and being able to feel and touch and take the pictures. So like for me, it's not just about money. It's about lifestyle and doing what I enjoy. That's why I'll never stop doing eBay. But in terms of like business and making money, way easier to make money on Amazon. I'm saying that hands down for me, at yeah. least for me, not for everybody, but for me. Yeah. Once it, well, once you have a system and you have processes in place, like with everything, Amazon is easy. It, it runs itself. 
essentially. It's it's very, very easy. And people are scared. Don't let fear, because once you get going on Amazon, every time, every time somebody emails me and goes, this is so easy. Like, I wish I had done this before. Like they used to, you know, last year and even this year, uh, I created a bunch of private videos for, you know, Amazon 101, basically. And people are like, this is crazy how easy it is. And they would always start with the individual account for, you know, a dollar an item. Every time you sell an item, you pay a dollar. And by the second month, they were all upgrading pro accounts. So I was, it was, I love seeing people get started on Amazon. I love it. Thanks for sharing so much information. The gatekeeping was just basic info. Yeah, absolutely, Jenny. Uh, Tracy asked how much. So I put the link in there if you want to join um, before Monday for the masterclass. Uh, there was a question. If you can't uh, be available Monday, if you do sign up for it, you will have access to it, obviously, after Monday. Um, you don't have to. If you're busy Monday, that's okay. Sorry, the Amazon guy's like looking at me like he like he's ringing my doorbell because when I get Amazon returns, he like wants me to sign for it. And he sees me like I'm literally in my look, look at this. <laughs> I'm literally in like here. And he like he just went around my front yard and he's like pointing at me. He's like, he's literally pointing <laughs> at me. I'm, like, I'm on a live stream right now. What do you want me to do? One thing I'll tell you, never burn your business because they probably know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I remember the beginning of eBay where everything was an auction. We mailed cash. Yeah, those days are long gone. Amazon makes it so easy to get paid. People just have their credit cards in. It's so, so easy. But if you're not available Monday, that's okay. Uh, I can't remember who asked that question. but um, uh, It's lifetime have, access. Yeah, yeah you'll so. have access to it long after that. So um, Yeah, so I could promise everybody, like literally, if you've been following me and you know, um, and, and, you know, you like my content, I can tell you right now that literally the value of this masterclass is I'm estimating it at a hundred to a thousand X of what you actually would pay for it. Just literally I'm making $10,000 a month and I'm putting it all into a masterclass. Yep. It's just like, you don't know how many people have literally hit me up behind the scenes. Like you're an absolute idiot for doing this. Like, and I'm like, listen, I want to help people. I want to make a difference. And you want to know what? Even if 20% just follow, because I hate to say it with anything, eBooks, courses, Tony Robbins put out a statistic. It was like 96% of people who read a book, they only go through the first page. <laughs> and it's, it's just, it's terrible. It's terrible. But I, I hope that I can help more. Yeah. I, I look for what it's for the value that you're going to get out of it. You just showed you can make $20, $30 on an item. You literally only have to sell a couple of items and you're already profitable. Like, what better investment and the knowledge you're going to get out of it, the research, everything, the, the use of tools, you could use those for other things going forward. Just it, there's all kinds of other stuff that's available. And, and again, I put the link in there. When you read down Steve's um, uh, website there, the link that I provided, you'll see all the different stuff that uh, he's going to show you how to do, not just how to buy stuff and how to you know flip it and how to sell it. It's, it's about research. It's about using third party tools that a lot of people have never used. It's there's a lot to it, dude. And can I say one thing? This is like one of my favorite things to do on the weekends. I'm trying to stop drinking as much. I don't drink a ton, but like a couple of drinks here and there. What I really love doing is like having a glass of wine or two, sitting back and just doing some sourcing. Cause you can't really do that legally at the thrift store. You know what I mean? No. But like you could sit on the computer, sip a nice glass of Merlot, do some sourcing, go down a bunch of different rabbit holes. Like it's freaking exciting. I absolutely love it. Like finding 80%, 100%, 200% profit items. Yeah. And depending on what, how much capital you have, you could go into all different types of arenas. I paid a hundred bucks uh, about a month ago for a brand new sealed Sony CD player. And it literally just sold for $300. Now that's not an everyday occurrence, but you know how some of those things go, even remotes, man, there's remotes that go for over a hundred bucks new. Cause they're yeah. so rare and discontinued. Mm-hmm. Yep. I sell Harmony. Just this is a little bolo for everyone, but anything Logitech, Logitech Harmony's e, E1s, uh, the R500, anything Logitech Harmony remote, it, the used ones I sell for like 40, 50 bucks. Like Insane. used. Most of the, the like new ones can go even higher. Brand new ones, 100 plus. I sold a Logitech Mini Magic Touch one that was still in the packaging. I actually got this out of a pallet that came from an, an electronic place. It sold for $165. <laughs> Oh, can I give a tip? Can I give a tip? Because I saw a question from uh, Urban uh, Fossaker. Yeah. I've had probably, we've had over almost 250 people join the masterclass. And wow. just so you know, the masterclass, it's on pre-sale right now. In two days, it's literally tripling in price. I'm not trying to say that to scare anybody, but it's just going to be stupid for me to sell it at such a cheap price with so much yeah. value. I'm just kicking myself. But the point I'm trying to make is, We've probably had 20 people just in the UK, 10 or 15 from Canada. Uh, we've had a couple from Australia. And 
you can do this method in other countries and I'll, I'll show you guys, I'll teach you how can I, in one minute, can I share people? Yeah, how yeah, to do yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Buy the items from amazon.com. Even if you live in another country, set up a relationship with what's known as a prep center. There's hundreds mm -hmm. of them in, in the country, in the United States, a prep center will receive your items for one to $2 and then they'll send it to Amazon. So say you live in Australia or Canada where, you know, the market's quite a bit smaller, set up a relationship with a prep center, send me a DM on Instagram. I can help you find one, send all your stuff to the prep center, then have it get sent to amazon.com. You never have to touch it. You never have to see it. That's how my buddy in Alaska did a hundred grand, dude, he's in Alaska doing a hundred grand. He doesn't even touch it. He just uses a prep center. So yes, you could do it internationally. Yep. So yeah, anybody who isn't, I know I have quite a few that are in Australia and England and, and all over. So don't get scared of that. There's ways to do it. Uh, and if you do sign up for the masterclass, uh, DM Steve, you'll have his email. You'll have you know Instagram he's available on, get you a prep center and get set up. So that's a great, great question. Thank you for asking that. And thanks Steve for uh, yes, sir. clearing that up for everybody. So we're going to leave you guys to that again after Monday. It's going to trip like crazy go up in price. I put the link in the chat. It's also in the description below. Uh, if you can't find it or you're having issues, email me rockstarflipper at gmail.com or Steve and um, and we'll get you set up. But get it before Monday. Monday's a holiday. So you have the weekend to get ready. The holiday, you don't got to ship. You got your free time. Get out, sit back, go. Grab, a glass, grab a glass of wine, sit back <laughs> and, and start learning. Like I said, with what you can sign up before Monday, you could sell three or four or five items and pay it back. If nothing else, maybe it'll give you the kick in the butt to get going on Amazon. So and this if you're new and one thing I'll say, this isn't content you're going to find on YouTube. You know how most content is on YouTube, yeah. but it's like, it's still valuable to buy courses that are on YouTube because it's all together. But this, you're not going to find this content online. This is something I've literally discovered over the last year. So I just want to put that out there. <laughs> yeah. No, and yeah, like I said, for those of us to go through and, and try to do this on your own and piece it together from Google or YouTube, it would be next to impossible and it would take you an absolute lifetime to, you know, this is somebody who's been a seller and me as a seller, as long as I've been, I know what it takes to, to figure this out and to, and to kind of put it together into an actual, like, you know, flow chart would be, I wouldn't try to tackle it. Good on you. <laughs> so, see, look, we haven't had a live show in a while. It was amazing. Steve hung out with an hour. His time is valuable. The invoice is going to from him for this hour is going to be way beyond my pay grade. <laughs> I get an invoice uh, from you. Yeah, he'll be in Vegas uh, next week, so I'll make sure to get him on some TikTok. Maybe I'll get a five million TikTok video with Steve on it. So, dude, we got to get uh, your mom doing it, man. That's how you got to get it, man. You got to pimp out the moms. Mom, <laughs> mom for the win, <laughs> Mills for the win. Dude, um, my girlfriend, my girlfriend the other day, she's like, "Stop pimping out your mom on TikTok." I said, "I can't. It's what the people want." <laughs> the people want it. You're gonna make a sign that says the, what the people want. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Awesome. But thank you a million times over. Guys, the link's below. Get it before Monday. Uh, don't kick yourself after Monday. If you do, then I understand. But uh, we're going to roll out. We're going to let Steve get back to his stuff. I'm going to get back to my prepping for Vegas and packing because I live yeah, on me Monday. Too. So. See you in Vegas. All right, buddy. It's good to see you. Good to talk Thanks. to you. And uh, I'll see you in a few days. All right. Take care, everyone. Thanks so much for your time. All right. Bye, everybody. All right. Bye-bye.